Hello everybody, my name is Rick and I'm part of the CIS Critical Security Controls version 8 panel and have been part of the Critical Controls for a number of years. And so I started this series to go over the changes from version 7 to version 8 and this is my second in a series. You can get a link to the first one down in the description as well as a link to the CIS Critical Security Controls page where you can download your own copy and follow along at home or go to their workbench where you can provide comments or questions to the larger panel audience. So this control is control number two, which is inventory and control of software assets. Here's the page for that. And, you know, just like with hardware systems, where it's like, hey, where'd that box come from? It's where this software come from. But there's other issues about just not just unauthorized, but unwanted applications, things that might have licensing, issue, licensing issues. You don't have enough licenses or you have unauthorized licenses for them that people may have downloaded. The presence of unauthorized licensed software, you know, and potential for legal issues. So you might have certain software like these that you know could allow you to you know download copywritten content or your users to download copywritten content and open your organization up to other malicious software. One question that we've had is about why is hardware assets and software assets separate or enterprise assets we call it now and because you know you wouldn't have software without hardware so why are you separating them? Well there's a number of reasons for that. One is that software is often managed by different departments and actually paid for by different departments. You know, so like difference between an office productivity app versus a security app or a finance app versus something that manages control systems. You know, so, you know, they're not just one place, but from an IT and IT security standpoint, you need to kind of know what is out there. And it's very critical for, you know, as a foundation of cybersecurity, as I said in the first one is, if I don't know what I have, I can't protect it because the bad guys are certainly looking to see what vulnerable versions of software I have available or trying exploits to see if I have vulnerable versions of software. So not a, I got to know what's on all the assets that are out there. Traditionally, also, software is kind of more dynamic on systems. You know, nowadays, obviously, with cloud and, and virtual systems, we kind of spin them up and spin them out all the time. But software is on top of all of those as well. And users usually have sometimes have control over software they download. And so you want to know if some user downloaded some software to, you know, do some video conversion or, or something like that, that you don't want on the network that could be vulnerable, that may not be caught by a, um, you know, your endpoint security protection. And you also don't want to have any copyright, copyright violations, you know, because you have unlicensed software that somebody's usually particularly using particularly for the business. So because, you know, unfortunately, you know, many organizations don't have a control over what their users download and install. Obviously, large enterprises lock all that stuff down. And so the the final element again, and I keep talking, come back to licensing again, is we need to be able to help track those licenses. Do I have 100 versions of something that I only have licenses for 50? Well, I mean, to kind of follow up on that. So it's not just about the security of the software and unauthorized software, but presence of unlicensed software and the potential of software to cause harm through being malicious itself or opening a door to be able to, you know, have another back channel in that you're not really watching. So finally, to kind of reinforce this issue of software is important, just recently, like last week, the, the, the U.S. Department of Homeland Security, Cybersecurity Infrastructure Security Agency, CISA, posted a catalog of practices that they find especially risky. <laughs> um, they have two so far, but the first one is use of unsupported software or out-of-date software. Now, while this is specifically meant for industrial control systems, obviously applies to everything because when we get to configuration management and, and number four, we will be talking about, you know, how to make sure things are patched and up to date. And I don't know to do that if I don't know where everything is. So let's take a look at the updates that we made to the safeguards between version seven here and version eight here. <laughs> Obviously, as I said before, we used to call them some controls and now we call them safeguards. We also realigned the safeguards to be kind of with the implementation groups more cleanly than over on version seven where they're kind of staggered. And you see, we have a lot of implementation group three safeguards over here. And we removed some of the safeguards that we didn't feel that applied. So for instance, you know, 2.4 tracking of software inventory, we merged with 2.1 over here and just said, establish and maintain the inventory. 
the 2.5, where we talk about integrating in hardware and software assets, we move to control four about configuration management. 2.10, about segregating high-risk applications, we also remove to control.4, because that also is a little bit more about configuration. And universally, from a language standpoint, you'll see we change whitelisting to allow listing, and where we say blacklisting before, we say block listing. So to get a little deeper dive into, I'll take those down, take a little deep dive into version seven, let me move over so you can have a much bigger screen and because this is kind of small print, I wanna make sure you can see all of that. I'll move over a little bit here. As I said before, version eight is a complete rewrite. You know, you can see that we've updated a lot of things in here, added a lot more detail. 2.1, we talk about inventory and licensing, as I had mentioned a lot before. Um, also deployment of and updated of mechanisms to uh, be able to track different software. And 2.2, we really get about end of life and unsupported software, like the CISA thing that I mentioned before. Number three, 2.3, uh, unauthorized software is not just unallowed, but also unlicensed. Again, I keep hitting that license issue because that's an issue. And 2.5 and 2.7 is kind of like allow list of you know software libraries and scripts to, to block unauthorized um, versions of those. And because this can be accomplished by monitored endpoint detection software, but we wanted to make sure that it's something that is understood. So now let's look at the upfront material in control number two. So we updated the overview to kind of describe more about what software assets mean. And it's not just about, like I said, unauthorized and, and unmanaged software, but whether or not it actually executes because you might have a version that doesn't work on a certain you know, level of hardware or a certain version level. That might be something that could impact the business. When we look at the why this control is critical, you know, we talk again about the fact that you can't protect what you don't know, how we need to understand what software is on and what versions are on the network and all the devices, that out of date software is a common threat vector that people that, you know, adversaries will exploit and use that to be able to get a foothold or laterally move within the organization. Even when software might be out of date, they're knowing about it will give you the opportunity to put in other compensating controls, you know, such as stronger authentication or maybe some isolation to it. We mentioned licensing again and talk about removing unnecessary or default applications off of platforms and that asset management is not just a foundation of security, but it's also a foundation of proper configuration management and supports incident response as well, because there might be something where it's like, oh, well, who has this version of software that might be vulnerable that I need to go remove? So within the procedures and controls, we talk about the use of allow list to only allow unauthorized software to not only be installed, but actually run. And we talk about tools to conduct software inventory to help determine you know, whether or not they support the configuration and this supports configuration management. And while we don't go into it into narrative, we do have links in the bottom that talk about sources for you know software management and asset, software asset management within the cloud, Internet of Things, industrial control system, and mobile applications. You know to provide guidance from their respective you know critical security control companions that we have in the links at the bottom of of the page. So. Hopefully this overview was helpful to you. I try to be brief, touch on some of the main points. As I had said before, you know, if you have any questions, you know, go download the, 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 the controls yourself from the link in the description. If you have any comments, go to the workbench that we have on the page and I'll link in the description as well. And hopefully you have a great day. Hey everybody, as I said before, I don't have any pets in the house. So these art pieces are our pets. This is what we affectionately call our cello fellow. Hope you enjoy.